Two new horror films on Peacock, both from producer Jason Blum and the Blumhouse Universe. Let's talk about The Black Phone and They Slash Them. Hey guys, Dan here. This is Dan Reviews. Welcome to my spoiler-free reviews for the new films, The Black Phone and They Slash Them. These are both streaming on Peacock right now. The Black Phone was in theaters briefly in uh, June, I guess, and, and early July, um, but is now on Peacock for free if you have that service. And then They Slash Them is a Peacock original. So uh, I figured, you know what, they're both from the same producer, they're both horror movies, let's talk about them both at once, because I missed The Black Phone when it was in theaters. So uh, we're gonna talk about those together. First though, I do wanna welcome you into Dan Reviews, and thanks for finding this video. And uh, if you have seen these movies, I'd love to hear your thoughts below in the comments. Uh, and like this video too, that helps the channel out as well. And of course, subscribe if you're not one of my subscribers. So let's let's just knock these out. Uh, so the Black Phone is first. Uh, this is Ethan Hawke, who sort of has had this uh, kind of unwritten rule to not play villains in movies. And, you know, he's dabbled a bit. Um, you know, Valerian and the Thousand Planets or whatever that movie was called. He was, uh, I, I would say, definitely not a good guy, but he wasn't like an out and out villain. Um, and he sort of had this rule to kind of shy away from those rules, kind of like Moon Knight, like, I, I don't know, is he the villain of Moon Knight? I, I, I only saw the first two episodes, but um, I would say he's definitely not a good guy. Um, you know, a little spoiler for Moon Knight, I guess. But, um, but this is the first time that he really has ever played an out-and-out -out villain, and he is... Very, very villainous in this one. So The Black Phone was directed uh, by Scott Derrickson, who has a bit of a history with Ethan Hawke because he directed him in the Sinister uh, movie, the first one. I, I guess he might be directed the second one too, but Ethan Hawke is not in that. But um, that is, for me, one of the most brilliant horror movies of the last like decade or so. I, that was so terrifying and so original too. Um, and, and this actually dabbles a little bit into... Not specifically that same world, but, you know, Sinister was all about finding these old uh, videos, like 8mm uh, camera videos of the the villain Bagul uh, literally killing people. Um, and, and here we have some retro stuff as well because um, it takes place in the 80s. Um, and essentially, uh, Ethan Hawke plays the grabber, who is this guy going around town, snatching up kids and, um, you know, locking them in a basement, eventually killing them. But uh, this one boy, uh, it takes place, I'm sorry, in 1978, not the 80s, but clo close. Um, but this one boy, um, Mason, Mason Thames, or Thames is who plays him, who I don't know from anything, but he is excellent in this movie. He is so good for a kid that uh, really has no acting credits. It's the first thing he's ever done. Um, but, uh, and I don't, uh, you know, maybe he's done a commercial or something, but like movies, this is it. He has no movies or TV to his credit. So good for him. Um, but anyway, so he gets uh, kidnapped by the grabber. And there is uh, this black phone in the basement where he's being kept, and he is receiving these mysterious calls from past victims of the Grabber who are trying to help him escape. Um, and the Grabber does not know that this black phone is ringing and whatever. So I, it made me think of Sinister anyway because of that sort of retro element to it. This takes place in the past, though, whereas you know Sinister took place in the present. But um, but this kid also has a sister who is, um, you know, a bit psychic. She has these dreams. And so um, this this is, you know, sort of a supernatural horror movie in that sense. Um, and there's a couple of twists. I don't even want to get into some of the other characters. Um, but let, let, let's just say that uh, this is probably the scariest movie uh, horror-wise I've seen this year. Um, you know, Scream was definitely good. And, and Scream, you know... At, personally might still be my favorite. I gave that a B plus, and I think that's that's about right. Um, but, you know, that's a series that we followed throughout. You know, The Black Phone is an original movie. Now, it is based on, it's either a short story or a book or something, but, um, and and the, the gentleman that wrote it is a producer as well. Um, but the, the uh, intensity of this movie, there's not, 
you know, there's a couple of jump scares here and there. But that was, you know, the good thing about Sinister, too. There wasn't a ton of jump scares. The the scary element, the thriller element, was everything that was going on. The surrounding stuff. The villain. And, you know, like Ethan Hawke, for example. He, you know, w covers his face most of the time, right? With this mask. Maybe you've seen that in the posters or the trailer. But the masks change throughout the movie, um, you know, based on what is going on with the grabber. Um, and, and and somebody actually had to point that out to me. I didn't pick up on that myself, but I was like, man, that is really cool. Um, you know, just little touches like that, 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 that give us this creepier atmosphere than just, oh, here's another jump scare. You know, this is very atmospheric and I love horror movies like that. Um, so, uh, the other thing I want to point out is, you know, this Scott Derrickson guy, he was, he had, uh, directed the first Doctor Strange and he was set to direct... The, the Marvel, uh, what is it called? The Universe of Madness, Multiverse of Madness. Um, and and then he chose to direct this instead. And this is a way better movie, in my opinion, than the Multiverse of Madness, like for sure. And that had a lot of horror elements too, you know, because Sam Raimi ended up directing it and wanted to make it, you know, a little bit horror -y. And maybe that was the point. Maybe that's why they got stuck, Scott Derrickson, because, okay, A, he did the first Doctor Strange. B, he did Sinister and, and a few other horror movies, and they wanted to make that more horror. But look, uh, to me, this was a much more cohesive movie. Um, uh, I would say scarier for sure, too, because we're really, even though there's supernatural elements, we're in the real world, you know, and, and certainly um, these days, too, with like child trafficking and stuff like that still, you know, a very, very, uh, bad issue. Um, but yeah, this, this one for me is a winner. Best horror of the year so far. I leave the black phone with an A minus. Next, we're going to talk about they slash them. And I have to admit, um, I had been calling this movie they, them because it's they with the slash them. And, you know, when, when you're doing pronouns and stuff, you know, my pronouns are they, them, whatever. Um, you don't say the slash, right? But I read that the way you pronounce this movie is they slash them, and it's a slasher horror movie. So I thought, okay, this movie, and I'll, a little bit of a spoiler for my grade, this movie's bad. But when I heard that, I thought, okay, that's, that's actually pretty clever. Um, you know, to, to call it they slash them. Um, I, I don't know how anybody would know that because, uh, you know, there's no real advertising for it except for a 30 second clip on Peacock. And I don't think they say the, the title. So I'm not sure how a person would know that's what it's called. So bad marketing, uh, I guess, on their part. But uh, but anyway, this has another very famous man in the lead. Kevin Bacon uh, is playing a man running this uh, conversion camp. And um, Theo Germain is sort of the, the main kid. Um, and he's been in a few different things. Or they, I, I think they are non-binary. Um, they have been in a few things. But I know them best for um, being in the first season of Work in Progress, which was an excellent show uh, on Showtime a couple of years ago. I, I didn't actually watch season two, so I don't know if they are in season two, but um, based on how season one goes, I, I would say not. Uh, but anyway, he's sort of the, the main guy. But there's uh, a bunch of adults that you might recognize. Anna Chlumsky uh, is in here as like the, um, the medical doctor of the camp. Uh, Carrie Preston from uh, The Good Fight. And, you know, many other things over the years. Um, she plays uh, the, the psychiatrist. And essentially, um, you know, <laughs> Kevin Bacon is trying to, like, give us this aura of, uh, okay, you know, look, I'm not going to, this isn't a conversion camp. You know, we're just going to talk and, you know, we'll see how you feel about who you are and, and da, 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 right? So, okay, right away, giving off these vibes of, like, to us, the audience of, like, okay, this guy is obviously, you know, uh, going to be doing some bad things. He's clearly going to be the villain. Um, and, and, you know, it, it takes a couple of twists from there um, with both the adults and the kids. Um, and, okay, here's why this is a bad movie. So I said up front, this is not a great movie. Because it didn't need to be a slasher. I appreciate the pun with the title, but the truth is, it doesn't, and it doesn't even become a slasher movie until the last 20 minutes, except for like one scene sort of in the middle. And then the last, not even 20, probably 15 minutes, um, there, there's a slasher element to it. Um, so it's, it's barely there. And I don't think it needs to be there. I think 
this setting is brilliant for a horror movie. You know, conversion camps obviously are such a huge hot button issue. Um, you know, our governor here in Pennsylvania just uh, made them illegal. Thank you, Governor Wolf, for that. Um, but, you know, they still exist in many, many, many states uh, around the country and, and I'm sure around the world, too, um, where it's straight up illegal to be gay. Um, but I, I think this setting just lends itself to um, the, the psychological torture and, and that sort of thing, more of like a saw kind of thing, I guess, is... A little physical, too, with the physical torture, but, like, it's very psychological, you know? Uh, you know, to me, this movie would have been much better served with that sort of in mind and, and you know, literally and figuratively in mind. But, um, you know, with the writers writing this in mind, it didn't need to be a slasher movie. And, and therefore, it, it ruined a lot of what it was sort of building up because the first, most of the first hour is about, let's get to know the characters. Let's find out their deals. Um, you know, there is one really cool scene um, with the psychiatrist and the Thea Germain character where she is basically telling them, um, you know, hey, you are nothing. Your parents, you know, think you're nothing. Da, 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 da. Under the guise of like, this is how your parents see you. But really, it comes across as this is how the world sees you and, and all this. Like, to me, that is much more of an interesting topic and plot than just having a general slasher movie um and, and as a result of this really miseven tone the movie just never succeeded for me that one scene was like really good and then nothing else really well the the intro scene where kevin bacon's character comes out and like it's clear something's kind of not right with him too like that was good too um but then like it's all of it becomes a musical at one point they all sing perfect by uh pink in the cabin together is like this bonding thing and it's like it it comes from out of nowhere it's the only song in the movie um and it's supposed to come across i guess as like this bonding thing it for me it didn't work um so yeah this movie really it was it was verging on an f and then uh you know a couple of the the scenes i thought all right well that did kind of work and then when i learned that the actual title is they slash them I thought, all right, well, that's at least a clever play on words, even though I hated the slasher aspect of it because it just deviates into such a, a generic slasher after that. Um, and not cleverly either, you know. So I'm not going to give it an F. You know, I'm torn sort of between D plus and a D. I gave Firestarter a D, and this is probably about on that level. So uh, I will give They Slash Them a D as well. So the best horror movie of the year and uh, in contention for the worst horror movie of the year, both streaming on Peacock now if you're interested. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time on Dan Reviews It. Bye.